So uh, regulation of the securities market, uh, that the primary role for regulation of the securities markets falls on the SEC. The SEC is a, um, um, a uh, organization created by the federal government. The um, SEC has jurisdiction over uh, almost all interstate uh, stock offerings, so uh, and and bond offerings for that matter. Uh, the uh, the one uh, municipal municipal bonds are actually exempt from SEC uh, requirements. Uh, just a note there. But uh, uh, any any other security that is offered across state lines is subject to the regulation uh, requirements of the SEC. They. Um, they also regulate the um, national ex securities exchanges. Uh, they have uh, the power or ability to prohibit manipulation of securities prices. Uh, they also have control over trades by corporate insiders. Uh, next, uh, investment banking process. The, uh, um, the investment banking process is led by an investment banker. The uh, investment banker uh, helps corporations design securities uh, attractive to investors. They um, they will either buy those securities from the corporation and resell them to investors, or they sell them on behalf of. They'll talk about those the difference there in a few minutes. Um, the uh, so investment banking process stage one. Um, I'm not sure whether I um, completely agree with the order of this, but the, the activities are fairly accurate here. So stage one, uh, you know, how much uh, the, you know, the company needs to be raised, the uh, types of securities to uh, use to raise funds, um, selection of an investment banker. The, um, the selection of an investment banker might or it probably would be closer to the top of this process because the investment banker would be involved in the analysis of how much money could be raised uh, and the appropriate types of securities to to uh, raise. Um, uh, uh, this, this one, um, I'm not aware of anybody other than uh, in municipal governments uh, doing uh, competitive bids. Uh, as far as I know, all securities uh, offerings uh, in, the, in the public markets are done on a negotiated basis. I could be completely wrong, but uh, the, in the stock and bond market, certainly that is the case. Um, stage two decisions, re-evaluate. Uh, uh, best efforts are underwritten, okay? The uh, underwritten is also referred to as a firm commitment, um, but an underwritten agreement and investment bank guarantees the sale by purchasing the securities from the issuer, and then they resell them uh, with uh, at their own risk. Uh, best efforts ar arrangement, the investment bank doesn't give a guarantee that the securities will be sold, but they they um, get, use their um, their their um, network and um, and they attempt to sell them on behalf of the security. Um, you know, you, but be honest, when a um, uh, when a investment banker is unlikely to accept or you know, a an appointment if they don't believe that they're able to that they can sell sell security so um, and they also have an incentive to do so because they don't get paid unless they uh, unless they perform um, <clears throat> so um, the uh, uh, investment bankers and other parties uh, involved in the issuance of uh, securities they are paid uh, investment bankers are generally paid a fee uh, the on a bond offering, a corporate bond offering, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of one to two percent. On a um, stock offering, uh, somewhere around seven percent. Um, 
the uh, uh, IPOs might uh, the fees for IPOs might be higher. The uh, fees for established companies could potentially be lower than that. So, um, finally, setting the offering price. The, you know, the offering price is the the price at which the uh, the um, the security is going to be offered to the market. So um, that uh, especially on uh, new issues of uh, uh, stocks and IPOs, that is uh, a very very important. Uh, task. So, so, um, so continue with the investment banking process. The uh, the issue size. The first thing to do is to you have to cal to calculate. You have to determine how much money the firm needs. So you take the net proceeds and divide it by. One minus the flotation costs. I prefer issuance costs to flotation costs. It just um, it, that um, is, is what I have always called them issuance costs. Um, the uh, there are problems where there are problems in um, in your homework where there is um, there are um, additional flotation costs or additional issuance costs and the uh, the oops, let me see if I can do this. Oh, there we go. Oh, you'll when you do that with those problems, you will add um, additional flotation costs. So any additional costs will be added to the numerator when you uh, when you work those problems. There are uh, examples in the problems that I've. That I've uh, that I've worked uh, in the examples. So, but anyway, it's net proceeds divided by one minus the the issuance cost. This uh this is a will be given as a percentage. So an example down below here, uh, the uh, firm needs uh, four hundred seventy thousand dollars. The uh, flotation costs are six percent of the total issue. So it's uh, the amount of the issue is the Four hundred seventy thousand divided by one minus the uh, six percent flotation cost. So, so then uh, five hundred thousand dollars is issued. Uh, Thirty thousand dollars is uh, use uh, used to pay flotation costs. Um, so, uh, after everything's done, the uh, firm has four hundred seventy thousand dollars left over. <laughs> 